Oh man, do I love food. The LA Times even took notice after I ate at Hugo's nearly every day for 32 years. It was just blocks from my home in West Hollywood. And now I've moved to the motion picture and television fund here in Woodland Hill. And my obsession for good meals continue to simmer. Join me as I explore our food options here on the Wasserman campus. Hi everyone, and welcome to our third production of the original Foodie. Here on the Wasserman campus of the Motion Picture and Television Fund. I gotta tell you that over the last 35 years, I have had the pleasure of having breakfast every day at Hugo's Restaurant in Hollywood. You're going to meet in this episode a wonderful couple, Leslie and her Nudnik husband, Rich, who are partners at Hugo's and very dear friends, and still allow me to sign my revolving charge account. Also today, I'm going to have a lovely visit with Deborah Mancuso, who runs our dining rooms here on the campus. So here we go. Without further ado, please meet Leslie and her Nudnik husband, Rich Brennan. You've allowed me to come back to your restaurants all this time. Why is that? I mean, what? why have you allowed me just to go in and eat? You not only have been a great customer and brought many people into the restaurant over the years, but who called us when there was a fire? You did. <laughs> it was a small fire. It was, it well, it could have been, had I not. It, yeah, <laughs> yes, of course. I think uh, they treated me the next day. I was allowed a half a glass of water and two hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> Yes, right. that's what. Uh, and the key to the restaurant. Oh, and the key. We must <laughs> never forget that. I. That's right. I was given a key to the front door, which uh, I had to uh, return prior to my. Who did you leaving. return it to? Uh, well, I'm a bit of a liar. <laughs> and, <laughs> What's your favorite dish at you Well, guys? my favorites include. The quinoa salad, right? Uh, the pasta mama. Okay. Uh, those are probably my two. Oh, and not to be slighted is the Cuban sandwich. Uh -huh. My wonderful story about you goes is when you opened the one in Agura. Uh huh. And yes. I, and I came out for opening lunch and whatnot, and uh, I ordered the quinoa salad. Let me just say, this yeah. was the very first day we were open. We were, we were testing day. out the staff. Testing out the staff <laughs> and everything, and they brought the quinoa salad over, and it had everything in it but the quinoa. Yeah. And, uh, and I thought, well, they're off on the right track. <laughs> yeah. What's interesting is their number one seller is hamburgers. Interesting. People think yeah. of us as a vegan place, as a That's vegetarian place, but the number one seller Isn't is always right? hamburgers. Does uh, Pasta Mama come up there somewhere? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's definitely. Uh, but yeah. The big, and that's interesting. But, you know, we started as a, a butcher shop. Yes, yes. So having meat I never options, it. you know, and, and particularly really good meats available. This is a grass-fed beef that, that they use. It's probably one of the best burgers I've tasted. It is good and the size is good also. Yeah, it's, and, uh, and that yeah, goes yeah. back to our overall philosophy of making everybody comfortable at the table. You could go with a, a, a vegan and a hardcore carnivore and they're both going to be happy at Hugo's and they're not going to have to be uptight about what they're ordering because they're both in their comfort zone. Right. Your executive chef, who has been executive chef for, I don't know, 20 years? 27, 27 now, yeah. Was, when I first started to go, there was a dishwasher. And right. uh, he's quite, as Leslie says, he's quite inventive. Really. Also, he dreams. He does. He dreams food, and then he wakes up and writes, he has a pad by his bed, writes down the ideas. And then he'll come to, you know, a meeting and say, this is what I'd like to do or he asks for some suggestions. Nabor came up with a vegan corned beef made out of quinoa, and it tastes like corned beef. Several residents here have notified me that uh, they have been 86 from various restaurants around town <laughs> over their lifetime. <laughs> Not ours. We have an operating philosophy that we call gift of service. So what we do is when we hire people, we 
go through the gift of service, what the key points of it is, which is saying hello to people, spending time with them, being present when they go over the menu, because our menu is huge and it really intimidates people. We make sure our training is, is complete and we go over what it is about being involved in the Hugo's experience. We want people to come in there and real and think that they've never they've never experienced anything like this before. It's not the most expensive restaurant, but we want people to feel that when they come in they're taken care of. And that has played out so many times um, with people who've been really sick and have come to our restaurant and have gotten better. Um, it's just amazing when you see that happen. Tell us something uh groundbreaking that's happening at uh, Hugo's. We want to start bottling a lot of our sauces and oh. salad um, salad yes. dressings. Here's your scoop. So that's one of the areas that we're really trying to push forward in. Um, you know, have a refrigerated case inside the stores and oh, sell cool. that and some food as well. But one of the other things that we're working on that's really interesting is trying to introduce people to sorghum. Sorghum is the fifth most traded grain in the world. It takes little or no water to grow. Sorghum's gluten-free, it's non-GMO, it's organic, um, has a low glycemic index because it's highly drought tolerant and it improves the soil. California, it's required that people ask for water at a restaurant. Right. And, you know, we just wanted to go a little bit further. We thought there might be some other ways that we could help support you know, drought tolerant eating. We feel that by incorporating that into our menus that we make people more aware of it and uh, hopefully be a leader in changing people's appetites from rice to or quinoa to uh, sorghum. I must add here that uh, this sorghum uh, has passed through my body and it is incredible. This interview made my pregnant producer hungry. So we went over to Hugo's and had some lunch. Thank you. Thank you. See how they... Oh, that's beautiful. And it's in a wrap. Hey, Deborah. Oh, hi, Phil. Just the lady I want to see. How are you? Fine, how are you? Fine, thanks got some questions I'd like to ask you. Oh, well, I'm on my way to the villa right now. Oh, let me join you. Oh, all right. Can I drive? Um, no, I'm not allowed to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm ready. All right. One of the questions that I have is I, I wondered if the staff was trained in CPR. Yes, they are. All the wait staff are trained in CPR and first aid and some of the kitchen help are also trained in CPR and first aid. Well, that's good. I've been, I've been a lot of the residents didn't, uh, you know, we're not aware of this. Rest easy. Rest easy, we yes, thank you. Uh, Debbie, what's your most concern about the residents? Well, I want to make sure everybody's happy and that they're getting the nutrition that they need and uh, they, they let us know if there's something they like, something they don't like, something they'd like to see on the menu. But I also have a concern for their safety. If somebody doesn't show up for a meal and it's not uh, part of their normal routine to miss that meal, we want to check on them and make sure that they're all right. Uh-huh. Well, that's fair. That's, that's good to know. What sort of uh, assistance can we, the residents, be to you and your staff? Well, that's a good question. Um, I think one thing would be to give us feedback, like I was saying before, about mm what you like, what you don't like, suggestions that you'd like to see on the menu. But another thing that could be helpful is that sometimes our residents have developed relationships with the servers, which is great, but they want to have long conversations during the time when we need to be taking the orders of other residents and serving all the plates. And if they could have their conversations a little later in the meal when things have slowed down, that would be helpful. Ah, uh, good point. Good point. That's, uh, no, that's a very good point. Um, I've noticed I've uh, I do my traveling lunches and dinners. I start out with a piece at the cottage, then go mm -hmm. for another piece of that meal in the uh, lodge, and then go over to the villa for dessert. Oh, okay. And so the continuity of food to me is great. The problem, and I have to talk to uh, Robert about this because all of a sudden the bath towels mm -hmm. are the size of face towels. Yeah. And uh, 
That's funny. I know, and the only thing I've been able to do to conquer the problem is I've asked the housekeeping department to take in the shower curtain. <laughs> okay. I don't know what I could do about that. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> what I've tried to do is to uh, ask for half portions. Oh, okay. Yeah, we could do that. And uh, that seems to be because... Uh, and keep away from the dessert table. Yeah. Then I'm then I'm fine. But I think I think the food, the food service, the camaraderie, the I think that the whole capsule is. Uh, I, I don't think it could be better. Wow, that's really great to hear. But thank you very much. Well, thank you. It's been nice talking and writing with you. I just wanted to remind our residents how fortunate we are to have a dining room staff and the luxury of three meals a day prepared for approximately 200 people a day. I think my last line will be bravo to Javier, Kevin, and again Deb. So until next week or until we eat again.